Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Good evening, Facebook family. Welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose. With me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guide and servant on the healing journey. What's my name? Big Papa Brian Post. Hope everyone's doing fantastic. Tonight's episode, we're going to talk about going bonkers. Going bonkers. Have you ever just went cuckoo? Like, have you ever just lost your beep? Ever done that? Ever wonder what that's really about? See, a lot of times we think that when we have these moments of, and this is important, this is something that teens can watch and also the kiddos can watch, and I'll try to keep my curse word down to a minimum. We think, hello there, Lisa. We think that when we lose our beep, and we go bonkers. When I think of that, I think of that emoji with the head blowing off the top and the psh, right? We think that that's oftentimes about the situation. And that's important. <laughs> because your amygdala, your reptilian brain, is what stirs up your brain stem. Your brain stem is where all your most painful memories are at. The more stressed you get, the deeper into the brain stem, the memories get stirred up. So all of your mem all your memories get stored at the level of the brain stem. So when you get stressed, your memories get stored up. And this is so important because when you get stressed, it actually has very, very little to do with anything you're experiencing in the present moment. Okay, follow me on this. When you get stressed, your amygdala is alarmed. Your amygdala is all emotional. It's your fear receptor in your brain. So you think about your amygdala being here and your, your brain stem being here. Now your brain stem starts its development from shortly after conception. It's one of the first part, it is the first part of your brain to develop along with your spinal cord. And so it stores, it's like a computer, it stores every experience, every memory you have. Um, research says as early as the fourth, this was Thomas, uh, was actually Mitch Gaynor from the Sounds of Healing said that as early as the fourth week after conception, the fetus can hear. As early as the second trimester, the fetus can think. So if you think how early you are in utero, you're storing all these memories. So... All these memories are like just piled in here, like right? And they're 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 not memories you use all the time. Because day in and day out, you're just a lot of times you're just using cognitive level of memory or motor level of memory, and sometimes your 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 emotional level of memory. So it's like your names, your addresses, your movements, your laughing, your upset, you know, you're just operating in those three levels. But every now and then you get really stressed out and you stir up a part of your memory system called the state level of memory. So your amygdala, when you get really stressed, taps into your brain stem. But so what happens is when, you're, when your parents, let's say I'm talking to a teen here. When your parents do something that you don't like or they say something you don't like or they prevent you from going to the swimming pool or they prevent you from having your cell phone or they say it's time to time to go to bed and you're not ready to go to bed, what happens is your amygdala starts to get stressed. And when your amygdala starts to get stressed, depending on how sensitive you've been, like how much stress you've been under that day, let's say if you haven't eaten enough food or if you didn't get enough sleep the night before, or you've been arguing with a friend of yours, or you've had a lot of homework that you haven't been able to get through, or you're afraid of getting a bad grade. See, all these stressors get this amygdala stirred up. And what it does is the more stress the deeper into the brain stem it goes. And when it drops into the brain stem, what it does is it hooks around an old memory. It hooks around an old memory that resembles what you're experiencing right now. So you go from the present moment 
and you go down into the past experiences, like your past memory base, like memory, memory bank, like you go into the library and you dig around and you find a memory that reminds you of what's going on in the moment. And as soon as you do that, it hooks around that memory. Now, here's the problem with those memories is that a lot of our earliest memories are pre-verbal. We don't even remember them. So before three years old, you don't even you don't even have words to put to memories. Okay, it's not until after you're three that you start to have words that you can actually form to put, to put around memories. But sometimes if you don't have an opportunity to really talk about the things, the painful things you've experienced, you still won't have words. You'll just have emotion. So a lot of times your amygdala is experiencing something in the present and it goes down and it hooks around an old memory. But the old memory it's hooking around is an emotional memory. Now think about this for a moment. If mom says to you, you're not going swimming today, but what you, and, and then you hear it, and you get stressed, and you go down into the emotional memory, and what you actually hook onto is a memory that says, hmm, you're not going to get to eat today. You're not going to get food. You're not going to feel satisfaction. Your hunger is not going to get taken care of, right? You see how that works? So mom says, you're not going to get to go swimming today. And that's emotional and it stresses you out. But your, your amygdala goes down into your past experiences and it hooks around a memory of when you were deprived of something. It may hook around a memory of when you were deprived of food. It may hook around a memory of when you were deprived of love. It may hook around a memory when you were deprived of physical movement, when you didn't get to get out of the closet or you didn't get out of the car seat. It may, it may hook around a memory that, that says you didn't get your diaper changed. So it goes down and hooks around this emotional memory. It's the emotional memory of not getting a need met. Even though it's just swimming, and even though today up here in the present, you know, you know in your mind that everything else is going to be okay, that's not the issue because the amygdala goes down in the past and it hooks around a memory and emotion of deprivation. It hooks around an emotion of when you didn't get what you needed. And so when it hooks around it, it pulls that memory up and all those feelings come behind it. And then all of a sudden, bam! Now you're taking a past experience and it's interrupting. It's like it's shattering the present and it's becoming the moment. So you go down and you hook around that past experience that a lot of times is pre-verbal and you pull it up. Your amygdala pulls it up and then it goes, bam, it shatters the present. It makes your past experience the moment. So then you go into survival. It's called fight, flight, or freeze. You go into a survival state. Sometimes, depending on what you experienced when you were in those younger states, you may just freeze. You may go into shock. You may go into anger. You may take off running out of your helplessness, right? In the present, it's just not getting to go swimming. But that's not the problem. The problem is what your amygdala goes down and hooks onto and brings up into the present that shatters the present. That's the problem. That's when things get really ugly. And that's the same for kids. See, the thing is, kids have less conscious control over that than adults do. See, we've got the more the more developed left hemispheres. We've got the more developed um, rational thinking brain. Or children have, have the less, have the more immature rational thinking brain. We have the more developed oxytocin response, oxytocin being, being your brain's anti-stress hormone. See, our children have a more mature oxytocin response. So when our amygdalas, all of our amygdalas do this, when they go in and they hook around that old, that old memory that resembles whatever's showing up, whatever in energy, whatever words, whatever sensory experience that's happening right now, and it pulls it up into the present and disrupts the present and brings the past into the present. Then as children, we are literally held hostage 
Bruce Perry calls that being amygdala hijacked. Your amygdala is literally hijacking your brain. It's bringing your past experiences forward. As parents, as adults, we have a little better opportunity. Just slightly. Slightly. And the reason I'm going to say slightly is because in times of stress, we regress. In times of stress, we regress to earlier zones of comfort. So even for us adults, when we get really stressed, we'll regress. And when we're regressing, we also are hooking on to old memories. And we're bringing those old memories into the present. And disrupting the present with the past. Right? Now, we can also do that by hooking on to that old memory. And then when we disrupt the present, what we're doing is we're obsessing about the future. All the bad things that are going to happen in the future if we don't, if we don't do something different. Well, the problem is, is that we're operating from a place of fear. So when you're going bonkers, it's because you are dipping into old experiences, old emotions, old memories. Now, here's what you do about it. Unfortunately, in the moment, until you start to exercise this part of your awareness, this part of your consciousness, this part of your emotions, it's going to be really hard to do anything about it in the moment. So more than likely, you're going to have to wait until it happens. So you're going to have to wait until you've dipped in, you've interrupted your present, you've disrupted the present with the past, you've said something that you shouldn't have said, done something that you shouldn't have said, you run off, you freeze, you fight, you hit, you tear up, you break, you do whatever it is you're going to do. That's just going to happen. It's what happens after that makes all the difference. If afterwards you're able to get really honest and say, why did I really have such a strong reaction? What was I really feeling when mom said I couldn't go swimming? What was I really feeling? When dad said, I couldn't have the keys to the car. What was I really feeling when my child stuck his knife in my tire? What was I really feeling when my child hit me? What was I really feeling when, when my child cussed me out? What place was that putting me back in? What memory, what feeling was I hanging on to? Was I latching on to that was disrupting my present with the past? When you can get really honest with that and you can talk about it, you might even cry about it, and then you talk about it some more, what happens is that memory starts to become more integrated with your current experiences. When that memory becomes more integrated with your current experiences, it has less power, meaning your amygdala goes down and it doesn't hook on it as easily. Right, So that memory doesn't have as much power because your amygdala can't get stressed and go down and just hook onto it. Because as long as your amygdala can go in and get stressed and pull it up, boom, then you have less power over it. But when your amygdala can go down and not grab onto that memory and that emotion because you've made a connection, a solid connection to what it was really about. That it's not about what you're experiencing in the present. This thing, this emotion, this experience that you're having uh, right now isn't connected to this, ba- this past emotion and experience. It'll have less power over you. And the more you can do that, and, and I know that means we have to mess up a lot. But the more you can do that over and over and over again and make that connection, the less that old emotion will have power over you. And the less opportunity you'll have, the less experiences you have of going bonkers. And pretty soon you might slightly lose your mind. Some brains might stream out of your ears just a little bit, but you won't completely flip your lid. And so I hope that's helpful. Hey, Tracy, just wanted to give you one little idea, one little tidbit, one little opportunity for understanding at a deeper level why we lose our minds when we get stressed because we are being hijacked by our amygdalas. Now, there was a really good book that came out in the 90s. It's called Ghost from the Nursery, and it was written by Robin Carr Morse. This is too bad. It should still be one of the most highly, highly read books. I want to encourage you guys to to pick up a copy of that book if you have, have a chance. 
Ghost from the Nursery by Robin Carr Morse. And it will give you some really good insights into some of these early trauma experiences that I'm talking about. Remember, guys, in any given situation, we always have two choices. We can continue to react from our same imprints and blueprints of stress and fear and overwhelm. Or we can stop, we can slow down, we can take three to ten deep breaths, and we can choose love. Hello, Brenda, good evening to you. Now, here's the thing. If you keep going bonkers and you keep losing your mind, there are two ways that you can start to get a better grasp of that. One is repetition. That's what I'm telling you by having these experiences over and over and over again and learning from them. The second is emotional impact. We will be giving you both repetition and emotional impact at Post Parenting Camp 2019 coming up August 16th and 17th. So if you're finding yourself oftentimes hijacked by your amygdala, this is going to be a great opportunity for you to dig deeper, go into some of those deep recesses of your brainstem, pull up some of those trauma memories, address them, feel them, get more control over them, and give them less control and less power in your life. So I say that because this is also something that adults, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a parent to come to post-parenting camp. You could just be an adult who's gone through some really painful, tough things and is looking to find more enlightenment, more enlightenment, more love, more understanding of their life. You will get the equal benefit, plus you'll get it in a loving, supportive environment of a lot of other individuals seeking to be on the same path that you are on. So, Post Parenting Camp 2019, Oklahoma City, August 16th and 17th. Click on the link, check it out. It's good for adults, singles, doesn't matter. You don't have to have kids to get benefits. So if you're a, an adult adoptee with, with trauma, if you're a, a veteran and you've got PTSD and you've been suffering and you've been struggling, you will get a lot out of this event. I promise you, I guarantee it. And if nothing else, get a free copy of From Fear to Love. So good evening, Brian and Kendra. God bless you guys. Big Papa loves you. Hope you have a fantastic evening. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.